Let's talk about the, the Longhorns for a second, because uh, there has been a buzz around this program since Arch Manning, uh, in theory, has led a group of players to, to Austin. Alabama sees them week two. What, what, what are you sensing from the early days of camp? Other than the fact that you, we all know you voted the Longhorns number one in the uh, in the poll, even though you don't vote in the uh, coaches' poll. How did they get a first place Maxie, vote? Sarkeesia did ask me that, and I'm trying to track <laughs> down uh, the first place voter there. I, I reached out to Alabama today, and I'm told that it's a private ballot. Nick Saban doesn't feel comfortable releasing it. So I'm going down my list of suspects and seeing uh, who did give uh, Texas that number one vote. Uh, yeah, I think the buzz has been palpable since Arch Manning committed because, you know, getting a player of that caliber and that pedigree after a 5-7 and seven season, you know, speaks volumes to, I think, at least the confidence that uh, the family has in Steve Sarkeesian. Now, he's still got to prove it. You go 5-7 and seven again, and there may be another Texas coach trying to preach you to stay and come to Austin. So, uh, But it, it should work out well. Most all of us feel like Quinn Ewers is going to be the presumed candidate. He probably didn't transfer from Ohio State to come down here and sit the bench. Uh, and, you know, he plays next year. Arch comes in the following year, maybe red shirts a year. And if Quinn Ewers is as good as they say, maybe he goes to the NFL. If he's not as good as they say, maybe Arch Manning beats him out. So it's uh, it's all systems go. No breaks, as uh, Sark says, until Saturdays. In relation to Sark, and you know, there's no getting around, his first year was a bust. Does the commitment of Arch Manning give him a chance to breathe, or does it really still come down to the, the record at the end of the year? Yeah, it really doesn't because, uh, you know, most Texas football coaches since Mike Brown have either won the offseason or done damn well in recruiting. And, you know, now he's got a couple – top five uh, recruiting classes back to back. Uh, it's getting the, the type of players Texas is going to need to play and, and contend in the SEC. And mainly that's the O-line and D-line where they brought in 15 players uh, in the off season. So, you know, it's going to come down to Louisiana Monroe, September 3rd and thereafter. You, you got to put some wins on the board when you're losing four and five games every year. That's going to what recognize recruits are really going to uh, recognize and relate to. I realize that the next question is, and the answer to it is probably something you, you've been you've been talking about for ten years now. But, but I'll never forget being out in Texas. Uh, I think it was I was at A and M, and 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 the heat was starting to grow on on Mac Brown. And you know what's happened since then is is really uh, it's almost hard to believe. If you had to pinpoint something that. Uh, other than constant turmoil, I and mean, what happened to Texas, Kirk? I mean, I know this is not a new. <laughs> that's a, that isn't a new question for your column. No, it's not. And I think most people point to the quarterback position. You got to have a quarterback to to win and win big in college football. And you know, Garrett Gilbert followed uh, Colt McCoy after that uh, 2009 championship game loss to Alabama, and then he was a bust. He ended up going to SMU and still in the NFL as far as I know as a backup but you know they just you know struck out every time you looked either in who they got who they recruited who they didn't recruit from Johnny Manziel to RG3 to JT Barrett to Andrew Luck just go on down the list and and then they failed to develop these players especially in the offensive line I don't think they've had an offensive line uh, drafted high since 2002 and uh and the last offensive player they had drafted in the first round was Vince Young. And I don't know if these high school kids remember his name. So it's it's been a minute. And if you don't have those two staples, you're not going to win many games. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.